in the light of the new vision that Nisha is proposing. We are trying to see what does he, how does he propose the philosophy of man. As I told yesterday, there is only one thought that he is proposing, human being. But that he proposes through different phrases, through different poetic expressions. But all point to the same direction. Different, different words, they are not different ideas added, to, added one after the other. It is just one thought he is trying to put, just as a poet tries to express what is love in different terms, different symbolic um, images. So also he is trying to put it across through different phrases and thought style. So we have already seen the meaning of me, meaning of man uh, by means of his expressions of will to power and superman. And they mean more or the same. The third phrase that is used by him is eternal recurrence. Eternal recurrence. That also is saying the same thing, nothing other. But then, uh, at the first reading, we get the impression that he is speaking about the repetition of the same thing over and over again. That is the idea we get it. Even I too, when I was in the, in the earlier stage of my philosophical career, I too thought he is also he is proposing one yuga, he is coming after another yuga and it goes on. And the same thing will come again. That is the way he is presenting. But then in the light of better knowledge of Nietzsche's philosophy, now I understand it has got a purpose. It has got a, he is, he has got, he is a means of communicating the same message. How do, first of all, um, how does he propose? What does he tell? That is, what does he tell with regard to eternal recurrence? What is the meaning of eternal recurrence? Recur means come, uh, or, um, happen again. Eternal recurrence means um, eternally, always it goes on happening. The same thing is happening again and again. Let me not go back to the notes. He compares that one to a phonograph. Phonograph, now it is, they are not available. You just, the, that is the way we started the uh, recording, the, the music is heard from that one. The needle is going through the phonograph. The same, suppose that there is some problem with regard to the line. The same song is song is played again and again. So, according to, so he is presenting the whole history or the happening is simply going on happening again and again. The same thing will be repeated. So that is the, that thought the origin, the inspiration for that, this thought, he got it from early ancient Greek thinking as well as ancient Indian thinking. Indian thinking, it is there. Indian thinking is not um, a linear thinking. A linear thinking means thinking towards a goal, an end. The end of yuga or end of history. In, Christian, in Christianity too, there is a, a climax of history is there. The second coming of Christ, Parousia. That is the typical Western style of thinking. Now, in the Indian thought, it is more, more we can say, cyclic. One yuga, and then it comes, and after several, it comes again. So this kind of cyclic understanding is, have, is had in the in the in the east or oh sorry in the in the india so all these thoughts may have inspired him to take this particular imagery to present what he wants to convey through eternal recurrence the doctrine may be summed up as follows what is has been and will be innumerable times at immense intervals that is only the doctrine of eternal recurrence but not the meaning of eternal recurrence the doctrine, taken in the literal sense of the doctrine, it means what is, what is happening today has been already and will be in the future at uh, innumerable times, at immense intervals. Not, not to, today's is not going to happen tomorrow. 
long period after several 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 centuries as a yuga is that word indian understanding of yuga means a big not simply i don't know exactly exactly the number of years but it is a, a long stretch of time that is going to come again so it is a cyclic way of happening the indian understanding so he is putting it across the same thought and he is telling what is has been and will be innumerable times without innumerable time means there is it is goes on repeated goes on repeating itself innumerable times at immense intervals that means not immediately one after the other but rather the intervals between one yuga one period of time to the, the repetition of the same will come after a long period of time so immense intervals the cosmic becoming is something like a phonograph s- playing the same tune again and again so the all that is happening in the cosmos in the universe to the humans it is a playing the same tune over and over again a, a same thing is coming again and again the notion of eternal recurrence too shouldn't be taken in the literal sense rather in the metaphorical sense of having no fixed goal now this is the the meaning what he wants to communicate by his eternal recurrence in this one other thing is the the theory the theory he, he, he got this imagery from the indian thinking and the early greek thinking now what he wants to communicate communicate what is not he is not communicating that it will be repeated after several years not that one but what he wants to say there is no fixed to goal having no fixed to goal there is no it is not the whole happening moving becoming is not moving toward is not geared towards a, a fixed to goal that is the western christian understanding of history history and happening as different from that one it is a a happening now it is not a, it doesn't mean that it is same thing is going to happen again that is only a way of putting it across the meaning is that there is only a happening happening without any fixed goal as the end for that happening so it is not a linear conception of happening linear means a straight line a straight line now history one after another we are our western understanding of history is typically linear one after the other and so slowly 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 we are moving towards a a climax of history that is a linear understanding the heroic individuals will accept the situation and find joy in it why does he so why does he say so because it is not really comfortable to keep on moving without having a goal without having a goal where what is the purpose where are you moving there is no fixed goal there is no definite goal and that is difficult that is why it is called tragic vision it is a is a painful vision struggling vision but then it is a vision but then who finds it they find meaning who the heroic individuals ordinary people is difficult but the heroic people who are the foreigners of uh, sir this one superman they find meaning for for the mass for the crowd for the ordinary people this doctrine is frightening that is to think that the whole de- reality has no purpose or culmination that there is no no purpose no goal we are not going to a a fixed goal that is difficult to think so for them it is really frightening to be in such a situation of being in the same thing same thing that is the reason the beginning when i spoke about nihilism i said uh, that nietzsche nihilism what is speciality of that one as different from the russian nihilism russian nihilism looks for alternatives elsewhere this is meaningless the today is meaningless this world is meaningless but then where do you where you have to find meaning somewhere else go out of this one and go for a meaning elsewhere but nietzsche says no don't go jump into any other thing you find meaning here 
Here itself we have defined meaning. That is the that is the Nietzschean nihilism as different from the Russian or Christian nihilism or Christian understanding. The Christians believed in a climax of history. That is, as I already told, Christians as well as the that is a typically Western understanding, a climax. The history is moving towards a climax, one after the other. Year by year, we are moving. In a godless world, now that climax is what God. God was the fixed goal, the clip, uh, the fixed uh, climax. Now there is no God. In a godless world, eternal recurrence of constant movement is the only joyful wisdom. There is no fixed goal towards which we are moving. Therefore, the what is the what is the where we have to find meaning? Joyful wisdom means where do you find meaning? Meaning is where in the constant movement, which we have already repeatedly said about it in different places. In the we have to find meaning in the constant movement. That constant movement. That is what is expressed by eternal recurrence. We are moving, keep on moving, without any goal to which we are moving. The eternal recurrence happens because God is dead. That our ego is our destiny, our freedom is our necessity. Our will is the will of the world, which is in a never-ending cycle of time. So we are in the never-ending cycle of time. We are in time, but then the time is not going to be ending in a, a const a movement of time. For Nietzsche, the doctrine of eternal recurrence was a victory over nihilism by gaining an access to the new concept of immortality. But it is a tragic vision. So the, there is a there is a movement is there. So there is some uh, new understanding of immortality is presented. Even if, even if one dies, there is the movement continues. A new understanding of immortality or the so-called Christian understanding of life after death. There is a hint at that one. In so far as there is, in so far as we are moving, the movement will continue. In so far as I am interpreting the Christian, the reinterpreting my our Christian understanding, if we are um, stagnant, then we are condemned to condemned to remain where we are. So then there is no, no immortality. Immortality is we are if we we can be alive without end. So far as we are moving, so the movement has to start here. Not movement afterwards. If we are not moving now, we are not going to have immortality. So there is a, I think there is a very a deep meaning of immortality, implied meaning in Nietzsche's thought. It is a victory over nihilism. So he said no, no to God, no to all that has the um, the meaninglessness. But then he is presenting something. Yes, yes to something. And that is a, a new vision, a vision of movement, a vision of a vision without a, a movement without end, by gaining an access to the new concept of immortality, he is presenting a new vision. But it is a tragic vision, and why it is a tragic vision? Because it is painful, it is difficult. For the ordinary humans, will find it difficult to accept as a joyful wisdom because what the, there is no purpose, there is no end. We always want, we always want to get something, immediate result. The culture of today is more so, immediate result. We want um, take the medicine immediately, we want to see the result. That is the western style of thinking and medicine as well. Now there is no immediate result, it is a, a constant movement. Be in that movement, there we have to find, find meaning. So, the same thought is repeated. Human being is dynamic. Dynamic, and that is presented in terms of will to power, in terms of Superman. Superman is not, it is only a kind of constant invitation 
to keep on moving and in terms of uh, what you call in terms of eternal recurrence we are in that movement so it is that way when you understand the meaning of nietzsche's thought we understand the meaning of each of these phrases they are not different thoughts as different subheadings added together they all refer to the same thing but then um, with a different emphasis with this we go to the another and the, la the last part where um, regarding philosophy of god religion and morality those fine areas of thought what does he propose in as a he said about the um, god is that is he proposing another god religion is religion is become, become meaningless is he proposing another religion there is an implicit presentation is there but it is not it is not evidently presented in his thought so death of god and euthanasia of christianity with regarding god and religion his his presentation is more of more in negative terms nietzsche's philosophy of god and religion consists in his negative presentation of the death of god and euthanasia of christianity he speaks about that one death of god is dead and christianity is going to have a mercy and death going to die that is what he what he is telling but in that saying in that negative presentation there is an implied meaning of a positive picture of god i may have referred to this point the god that is that is said to have that is said to have been dead is the god of human creation we have created a god and made it a fixed stagnant god a conceptual god and that god is dead christianity has been holding to that one only today some difference is there at least at least some stray people start thinking otherwise christianity has always been holding to a conceptual god heidegger is going to uh, speak at length on that one the meaning of the god that we have been worshiping we have been worshiping a, a concept of god the i am making more and more convinced of the the way we have deviated in christianity a conceptual god okay he calls himself nietzsche calls himself an anti an atheist by instinct and never doubted it and hence he seldom gives arguments for it he is not giving arguments for the non existence of god sartre sartrean thought when you come we'll see he gives arguments there cannot there there can there, there cannot be a god now here what he is telling there was a god was perpetuated kept alive that god can no more be alive that kind of god a god that has perpetuated and kept on the pedestal as a fixed uh, reference that kind of god has no place it has become a uh, meaningless to have such a god that god is that so he is not giving any argument he simply proclaims god is dead and he proclaims with that one the advent of nihilism the coming death of god and birth of nihilism is the same happening <coughs> belief in a being so unlike life is rational for nietzsche why he says that god is dead because that concept of god has been always not only stagnant but stagnating ah there's a good expression not only the concept of god is stagnant same definition um, immutable unchanging a concept you are fixed and kept that stagnant god is also stagnating everything else morality is stagnated religion is stagnated literature is stagnated life is stagnated everything is uh, because the reference point for the 
every aspect of life is a god symbol of stagnation so he says it is irrational to hold to a such a god who is pure stagnation through and through to believe in such a god is crime against life because he, he is a philosopher of life a life movements dynamism creativity i am repeating these terms this is what nietzsche thought dynamism creativity um, and so on life movement he did not find the need for philosophy to seek beyond a transcendent principle this was not a simple atheism of just not believing in a god but of a catastrophic historical experience god is dead anybody can say there is no god that is different so many so many atheists are there but nishin proclamation of the death of god was a, a catastrophic historical experience catastrophic you find out the meaning from the dictionary a catastrophic historical experience an experience that has historically so important it has changed it has um, um what do you change the whole approach to thinking in philosophy theology culture and um, morality and so on everywhere it is the repercussion of such a thought is seen it is not a simple not believing an individual not believing nobody would have cared for that one if you don't believe don't believe that's all but he is giving a a powerful proclamation a powerful proclamation of the meaninglessness of such a god which we have been perpetuating that is what is criticized as if you without knowing nietzsche we will immediately start condemning him that he is an atheist how can he say god is dead quite true but then that is a superficial understanding of nietzsche the god that is dead is a god that is created by humans which will see which humans will see in postmodern thought and what is the catastrophic historical experience god is dead what for centuries people held in belief is no more has come to be irrelevant that's why it is a catastrophic experience historic catastrophic historical experience what has been so many centuries people have been holding it as as the as, um, the climax of the, or the center of their belief that has suddenly come to be meaningless is no more that is difficult that is why it is disturbing and people could not understand they took it in the literal sense just as we take other parts of nietzsche's thought that is why my interpretation is not not i am i am giving the meaning of the the poetic expression that he has used nietzsche makes a critique of christianity in his antichrist that is one of his books it is a critique of religion as a christianity uh, um, is a critique of religion as christianity was the only religion of his experience so he makes there is just as he makes a critique of god god of the then christianity god of the christianity of his time because a god that has been developed in theology and philosophy a conceptual god that was the god of his experience that god cannot be so also the religion of his experience was the the religion of christianity and he says the he makes a critique of that one nietzsche had his respects for christ but he was pure as he was pure and without resentment life was encouraged by christ as different from the pharisaic religion that strangled life so look at the life life of christ christ was someone who is standing for life life was more important the the various um, um sabbath episodes the pharisees were concerned about stagnating law is not followed jesus is telling no what is important is the person life movement that is more important so christ if you really understand christ was such a dynamic and creative thinker and doer and he understood that one but unfortunately that christ as i told elsewhere or as i still still i hold christ 
has been mummified by Christianity. We have made a Christ according to our convenience, according to our comfort. Just as we make a also, we interpret a charism and make according to our convenience. This will suffice. So also, original, the Christ of the gospel is different from the Christ of Christianity. That is why he was, he was, uh, uh, what do you call, unhappy about that one. He encouraged life as different from the Pharisaic religion. But later, the Christian faith began to show itself to be resentful to unbelievers and to the world. Christ was very compassionate, understandable, understanding, forgiving. But then, the later followers of Christ, they made a different picture of Christ. Because they have to give a reference to Christ. Christ has said that one. But then what? We say something and put the signature of Christ. And that thus we have changed the picture of Christ. So they are different. How we Christians were resentful to unbelievers. Christ was not so. The non, the, uh, the other um, deno, you know, denominations, the non-Jewish people came. He never sent them away. I have to go to other places, to others as well. That was the approach. He was not resentful to others. But Christianity must have been resentful and has been and was resentful to the non-Christians. And we have done mistakes. That means, and where do you put the blame? Where do you, responsibility, where do you place? In Christ. This is what Christ wanted. We interpret Christ. Our way of thinking, we put in the, in the mouth of what Christ was not so. We are misinterpreting. That way I, I like Nietzsche. We are misinterpreting our charism. We are misinterpreting Christianity. We are misinterpreting Franciscanism or anything for that matter. And we put, the, put in the mouth of Christ and Francis or anyone for that matter. Nietzsche is, thinkers will understand Nietzsche is challenging and disturbing. It is against all reason. For the, from the beginning, resentment and hatred has been the so-called religion of Khulaf. So Nietzsche is asking, we say we are the religion of love, but we have done lot of uh, antagonistic way, we have looked at the other, other, um, other religious people, religions of people of other religion. So many were killed. Even the, even the um, crusade, all those things are, now when you look from a better understanding, we find how we have gone away from the, the original meaning. The notion of God was invented by Christianity, what I have, I have said, and I put it here, forging the signature of God as an antithesis to instincts of life, in order to suppress life, is joys and richness. All life and movement was stagnated, and we developed a concept of concept of God, and we put the signature, forge the, forging the signature of God. It is my expression. Forging the signature of God, you put under that one, this is what God, him, God means. We will continue to do the same thing, forging the signature of God. And we forge for ourselves also. And this is what, this is what Christ wants. So we, to satisfy ourselves, we forge the signature of God and uh, the signature of God as was done in the official Christianity. Christianity. According to him, love, sympathy, selflessness, the spirit of sacrifice, etc., as lived in Christianity are expressive of the strangling of life. Because here only I have some um, difficulty of um, understanding Nietzsche. Maybe I may get a better light. Because the values that are proposed by Christ, like uh, forgiveness or love, um, compassion, those things are all strangling life, movement. But then, by in a, a footnote, in a footnote I am telling, Nietzsche did not understand the meaning of love and forgiveness. Forgiveness is a more of life. 
as i told yesterday i have mastery over myself so forgiveness is not a it is not a weakness it is real strength real power is that one i am able to have i am able to uh, forgive so also gandhi's ahimsa it is not a weakness it is not a failure it is a real strength so therefore so the niche as he uh, just put in a in a blanket fray way as a whole all the christian values were only suppressing life which perhaps is a misunderstanding but then maybe but then we did not we shall not go for condemning a uh, niche but rather we have to say there may be some truth perhaps we have used all these values for the sake of a uh, suppressing it is a reminder so it is not a critic it is a reminder for every one of us we need not look whether how much of truth is there but rather there can be a possibility of suppressing making use of this these values in order to suppress life therefore the critique of niche remains still value valuable some interpreted niche's criticism as a seek as a secret yearning for the true and genuine christianity and which i think there is maybe a truth because his critique when he makes a critique naturally there is something implicit implied meaning is there i i want a christianity not a this kind of christianity not a christianity that was not visualized by christ but a different christianity there was a congregation that is not what was not visualized by the founder but a different type of a, a congregation that is the thing that is the message we have to take from nietzsche we have gone we have deviated and deviated and then we put the signature this is what francis wanted this is what the meaning of what he did this is what christ wanted we for the signature of people who are eminent and then in order to put forward our point of view our ideas as the main tenet of christianity the existence of god is denied by nietzsche it has nothing to base itself on it will hence undergo a euthanasia that means once the main the centrality of christianity is removed the heart is removed then one cannot be alive so also the heart of christianity god that is removed that means it is proclaimed as dead naturally as a result christianity will come to a, a euthanasia the the life the life stream is removed now the the oxygen is no more going it will come to a is a euthanasia means mercy killing so it will die by itself that is what nietzsche says it will die by itself but what kind of christianity a christianity that was made by us that christianity will come to a, a, a will die by itself nietzsche claims to be responsible for this by his proclamation of the death of god death of god may bring at first relief and encouragement but our culture is so used to it that it will cause a crisis it is disturbing those who are not thinking those who are slaves of given thought for them any change is disturbing so also the thinking people only they find nietzsche as meaningful for them 99% of the people 99 people who are teaching nietzsche also they will not find nietzsche as meaningful only stray people may find it as meaningful thinkers because they most of the people are they take for granted what is given therefore anything different is bad anything different is bad just as just as a different design was given for the garden there so we are so used to a kind of that straight line therefore if it is something else no it is not we are going to a kind of pre understanding 
the everything has to be straight line why i am saying because they are changing the changing the design this is okay very good i am happy but then telling the the maya i'm taking it taking it as an example for how we are disturbed by something different disturbed by having a bouquet only one side if two sides bouquet are no bouquets are not they are of equal shape we are disturbed it is not beautiful because we have only one understanding of beauty that the finding meaning in the other in the different that uh, we find it difficult death of god may bring at first relief but our culture is so used to it that it will cause a crisis so that is the reason why niche has caused a crisis a disturbance the central problem in niche's philosophy is to lead human kind through this crisis by building a new basis that will justify the loss of the old by the creation of a yet higher form of existence he is not giving very clearly what type of christianity what type of religion there should be but then implicitly he is giving a he is a giving a hint a pointing towards a different type of a religion we need to have a, a different so by saying that this is irrelevant something indirectly he is proclaiming the the need of a a different type of a religion a different understanding of god that is there that can be understood it is not explicitly given that can be understood only by persons who are able to think and to think beyond the the few lines that are printed and given stop here